Ornaments. What are ornaments? So embellishments written with symbols on your music. And this, of course, is a subject which can last a great number of years. To give a very quick and brief contrast, but the first phrase of the aria of the Goldberg Variations without the uh, written ornaments. And with a bit of liberty, just to play it as mechanically as possible with armamentation. So within that one short piece, there is such a world, such a kaleidoscope of ornaments. And I couldn't imagine wanting to play even something so seemingly simple, but yet so filled with mysterious symbols. Why would we want to play those symbols without knowing what Bach intended when there's a very clear key? It would be like reading a language and being able to more or less pronounce the letters, but not understanding why they were written as they were. Basically speaking, for all of you pianists out there particularly, look at what Bach himself has to say about it. We find a table of ornaments, so the various symbols for trills and mordants and appoggiaturas that he wrote for Wilhelm Friedman Bach, his uh, very gifted son. These are freely available in a number of editions. I would then ask of all of you to go a little bit farther, look at other great composers of that time. But we find tables of ornaments in harpsichord books by Jean-Philippe Rameau. So this is quite contemporaneous to Bach. We find another important one uh, just before Bach's time in Francois Couperin. And all of these are very, very relevant to what a pianist might want to do. These are ornaments which appear in the vocabulary of the day and with which Bach was very familiar. If anything, his table is a bit of a simplification or a distillation of these others. And it's very, very likely that he expected his pupils or children to go above and beyond that. But for everybody out there, Bach's table of ornaments is a great start. <laughs>